The Tower of London as a site of execution was synonymous with the Tudor period and the reign of King Henry VIII. It was inside of the Tower's walls that three queens of England lost their heads, including two of Henry VIII's wives. But most of the prisoners who were condemned inside of the Tower were taken to Tower Hill for their executions. Only the most high-profile people were allowed an execution in the Tower, but on execution day, the condemned were then taken from their prison cells out of the gatehouse, and they were taken on a short walk north to Tower Hill. Here was a public beheading spot, where an axeman worked to take the heads off those who had been condemned of some of the most serious offences, such as treason. After an execution had been carried out, the heads of the executed were then taken, often to London Bridge, where they would be dipped in tar, and then placed high above the gatehouse on a pike. But inside of the Tower of London today, there is an axe and a block, inside an exhibition in the White Tower, the oldest part of the fortress. This is a haunting reminder of the area's terrible and dark history, and this axe specifically in its huge size was allegedly the final axe used to take a head clean off on Tower Hill. Welcome to the fortress. Today we look at this specific execution weapon and the block and look at its history. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Some of the most high-profile people who were executed on Tower Hill, a short distance north of the tower, included Thomas Cromwell, Henry VIII's chief advisor, Bishop John Fisher, Edward Seymour, the first Duke of Somerset and Lord Protector during Edward VI's reign, and John Dudley, who was the most powerful Duke in England following Edward's death. It was a place which had been used for executions for centuries, as during the Peasants' Revolt of 1381, Simon Sudbury, the Archbishop of Canterbury, was dragged out of the tower and he was then beheaded by an angry mob and crowd. The bloodshed on Tower Hill continued and it was mostly as mentioned executions using acts that occurred there. Specifically in London different execution methods occurred usually in different areas with hangings being carried out at Tyburn along with hangings drawing and quarterings and burnings also taking place at Smithfield. Execution by acts was considered a humane execution method if you could believe it and one that was respectable, as an executioner could, if he was skilled, take the head off in one swift blow. But botching executioners such as Jack Ketch became infamous on Tower Hill for their terrible work, as Ketch took many swings of the axe. But the last recorded execution using axe occurred in 1747, as a Scottish baron and Jacobite lord, Simon Fraser of Lovett, also known as the 11th Lord Lovett, was taken to Tower Hill for his execution. He had supported the Stuart claim to the crown of Britain, and he was defeated at the Battle of Culloden, and he was then convicted of high treason against the crown. He had been held inside the Tower of London, and he had been sentenced to be hanged, drawn and quartered, but this was then commuted to a more straightforward beheading. In the lead-up to his execution, he displayed a good sense of humour, but on the 9th of April 1747, Lord Lovett was informed it was his time to be taken to his execution on Tower Hill. There were thousands of people who were there to witness the execution of him, and there were so many people that one of the timber stands that had been created for the crowds to view the execution collapsed, and nine people even died, and Lord Lovett laughed at the chaos that was caused. This could have been the origin of the English saying and phrase, to laugh one's head off. But as Lovett approached the execution scaffold, his executioner was there, and was stood with his axe in his hand, and also the wooden block was sat on the scaffold. The axe and also the block used in the final beheading on Tower Hill of Lord Lovett are the ones that today are found inside the Tower of London's exhibition, and it is a harrowing thought that this huge axe took the head off the former rebel and actually cut through the neck of a victim. The block is made from oak and it weighs £125 and to move it about was rather difficult as it is very heavy. You can also see that the block as a place for the victim to lay his head on, and when the axe would come crushing down, the head would fall onto the other side of the block and onto the floor or into a receptacle such as a bucket or a basket. The executioner then showed the head up to the crowd. But the axe you can see is huge, and this allegedly, the one that executed Lord Lovett, was made in the 1500s, and it weighs around seven pounds. Because this was an execution axe that dated back 200 years before its final use, it means that there is a very big possibility that this axe took the heads off many other people too. 
Executioners needed to be skilled with their weapons, and this axe could have been passed down by different headsmen in London, meaning it could even have been used to take the heads of the Tudor powerful men who made their way up to the scaffold. It would have been a difficult axe to use, as it was so big, meaning an executioner would need to be stood a fair way away to be able to swing the axe down onto the neck of the victim. But interestingly, this could also have made the axe unreliable, and some executioners preferred to use short-handled axes or hand axes. The large execution axe inside the Tower of London may have also been for show during these huge public gatherings. The block in particular had been in the possession of people related to the Tower of London for some time, and it was later donated to the Royal Armouries who display it today. But the axe was not the only one inside the collection, as in 1688 there were allegedly four heading axes, which were recorded to have been at the Tower of London. It was claimed also that this axe could have been used in the decapitation of the Earl of Essex, Robert Devereux, during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. Devereux was a favourite of Elizabeth I, but this axe does date back to the Tudor period, and this may have been correct. If this axe was used all the way back then, it's possible that it was used in other executions too. If Devereux was condemned in this way using this weapon, that means that the executioner from Tower Hill probably executed him using the weapon that he felt he trusted. Today thousands of people walk past the axe and the block inside the Tower of London, and they are transported to the dark past. It's an item which has a brutal connection with the past and history, and makes us consider the people who were executed by this weapon in barbaric fashion. On Tower Hill, public executions were huge spectacles, and Lord Lovett was the last victim of this weapon, and he may not have been the only one, as rumours about other victims of this specific axe and weapon date back to the Tudor period. Did it even take the head off a queen? But the axe and the block of the Tower of London today are terrifying indicators of what happened in the centuries and years before, a stone's throw away from the fortress and within the walls, where some of its victims still lie at rest within the chapel, centuries after they lost their heads, and those who were executed on Tower Hill were usually brought back into the Tower of London for their burial inside the chapel of St Peter at Vincula, and today thousands of remains lie either in the crypt of the chapel or under the floor, where some of the most prominent Tudor figures, such as Queen Anne Boleyn, are today laid to rest. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.